Now, if there is one thing that the Soviet Union and Russia have always been great at making, aside from uh, gigantic communist blocks and monumental buildings to house millions of people in confined spaces, are statues and monuments. Monuments to cement the glory of heroes, writers and just people who have made the culture and society of Russia as relevant as it is today. That's why today I'm in Moscow and we're going to take a look at a bit of a tour of all the main statues and monuments around the Russian capital. Now, of course, the statues and monuments are scattered all over Moscow. But I wanted this video to start from the Red Square. And thankfully, there's a monument right over there which allows me to do just that. So this statue over here that I see from the back is, um, was built in order to commemorate Pajarsky and Minin to soldiers or rather to um, Russian generals who gathered an, um, an army full of Russian volunteers to basically fight against the Polish and Lithuanian Commonwealth and making those forces flee from Moscow back in 1612. The statue was built for the 200th anniversary of the event, but in the wake of Napoleon's invasion, the monument could not be unveiled until 1818. Originally, the statue stood in the center of the Red Square, with Minin extending his hand towards the Moscow Kremlin. However, after the 1917 revolution, communist authorities found the monument was obstructing parades on the square, and in 1936, the statue was moved in front of St. Basil's Cathedral, where it is now. So this right here is the State History Museum, and right behind it, there's the statue that I want to see now, the statue of General Zhukov. So Zhukov is located right here behind the State History Museum and to be fair there is not a better location for him for um, Georgi, Georgi Zhukov was, a, was one of the key figures of the Second World War for the Soviets in fact he's a hero of the Soviet Union for what he did in the Second World War he participated or rather he led the defense of Leningrad, Stalingrad and Moscow from the invasion of Nazi Germany in 1941 and then he basically led the Red Army, the Soviet Army into, into Berlin in what was basically one of the final battles of the Second World War. Russian people still have a very good opinion about him, he has a really strong legacy and there's also an airport, the fourth largest airport in Moscow which is named after him, Zhukovsky on the east side of Moscow. Now, what I want to do is continue a few hundred meters again. I'm still not jumping on the metro. Still, I'm still going to walk because there's another gigantic statue. This statue is going to be way bigger than these two, which is not far from here, towards the south. And I'm, I'm also going to show you something related to the Second World War, which is, um, which is kind of interesting. So this is right behind the Kremlin, where the Eternal Fire is located. The fire that burns in memory of the victims of the Second World War. Or rather, as they call it here, the Great Patriotic War, because Russians see the war as some sort of uh, war in defense of their homeland from the invasion of Nazi Germany. And that's why you saw, I showed you how it basically meant uh, to the victims, uh, to the people who died for the motherland. Basically, you saw that it said uh, 1941 to 1945. And that's quite interesting because most Russians, two thirds of the Russian population did not know that the Second World War started on 1939. Most of them, since they considered this to be a great patriotic war, 
uh, a war for the homeland, a defensive war to defend their homeland, consider the war to be started, to have started 1941 basically, when we all know what happened with Nazi Germany um, starting, starting their march towards the east and towards the Soviet Union. So this statue right here is of Vladimir the Great, Saint Vladimir, who is responsible, let's say, for basically um, Christianizing uh, the territory of the Rus, basically ancient Russia. It's, it, it was basically him who is now considered to be the father of the Orthodox Church, of the Russian Orthodox Church and statues and monuments dedicated to him are present in, in the whole former Soviet Union. But this one right here is the biggest. It is also pretty big in spite of its young age. Putin inaugurated the statue of Vladimir holding its proverbial cross and sword in November 2016. And speaking of Orthodox Church, the most important cathedral, the Sabor, the main Sabor, the main cathedral of Russia and of the Russian Orthodox Church is right in front of me over there. There it is, Christ the Savior, the most important church for the Russian Orthodox Church. And right over there is our next destination. If you thought that one of Vladimir was already an absolute unit, this one is even more so. At 98 meters of pure unitness, it is the 8th tallest statue in the world. If you're curious about what the tallest statue in the world is, it's a statue in the state of Gujarat in India. And it was built in 1997 to commemorate the 300 years of the installation of the Russian Navy which was inaugurated by Peter the Great, to whom the statue is dedicated. It is not, however, free of controversy, as first of all, according to, let's say, the majority of the population of Moscow, it is ugly. Now, I get that uh, beauty is often, is often subjective, so I'm not one to argue that, especially considering that I'm not a, I'm not part of the population of Moscow but I do think that it doesn't warrant its reputation as an ugly statue but most importantly most people criticize the fact that this guy or rather this statue is dedicated to a guy who basically for the whole duration of his life despised Moscow and uh, always did his best to ensure that the capital of imperialist Russia was to stay in St. Petersburg and not in Moscow. So many people here consider it almost spitting on the face of uh, Moscovites the fact that Peter the Great would have a statue of this dimension, of this size, here in the very center of Moscow. So also some people want it moved to St. Petersburg. So now I'm jumping into the metro and I'm going back to the area of the, where the Kremlin is, so where I was a couple of hours ago. But I'm not going overground. I'm not going out of the metro station. But there is just one thing. It's not really a statue, it's more like a sculpture, which is underground at one of the metro stations around the Kremlin, which I really want to show you. So let's go. Plosha de Revolution, um, Revolution Square, right under the Kremlin. That's basically the, um, the Kremlin metro stop. And you can see here, there are 76 bronze sculptures all over the metro station. And uh, basically they say that touching these statues brings good luck. And this is why you can see most details around the statues are worn out. You can see the bronze is worn out. 
just because many people pass by and they just um, and they touch them hoping for it to um, to bring good luck to them so you see there are many this for example is the is the foot of the kid so the theme is recurrent and the figures are recurrent now the most popular one is the nose of a um, of a petrol man's dog which I'm looking for exactly right now so saying this is worn out because many people pass it by just pass by and, and touch it Снимаю, как люди трогают э, нос собаки. Знаете, да? Как, да, как знаете? Как знаете? А вы откуда? Бурят. Бурят? О, круто. Э, э, да, да, да. Но меня интересует, как... Извините, вы потрогаете бесплатно? Хорошо. Вы не трогайте, нет? Не да, трогайте. Все, спасибо, удачи! Now I'm coming out of Plaza de Revolución, I want to show you another monument, which is definitely by far the most Soviet of them all. Yes, indeed, over there in the distance is the true, the one and only Hammer and Sickle. There it says, uh, Proletari Sech Stran Saidinaitis, which is nothing else than the original version of the uh, popular proletars of all countries unite together. Now, its proper name is the worker and the Kalkos. And you see basically the, the two figures holding a, a hammer, the man and the woman with the sickle. It was originally built for the 1937 Worldwide Exposition in Paris. And funnily enough, the pavilion, the, the Soviet pavilion for which this was built was right opposite the one of Nazi Germany. You see, you see how imponent it looks like this, right? But up until 2009, it was, it was on a low pedestal, so it was much lower than that. And look at this, the monument dedicated to the conquer of space, built in 1964 to celebrate Soviet achievements in the space race. It's basically a rocket rising up to the sky, up to the night sky, up to space, basically, rising from, his, rising from its exhaust fumes. Absolutely magnificent. Look at this. The, at the base of the, of the monument, there's a, there's, a, there's a museum, the Cosmonet Museum. So it's actually pretty cool because this is the monument, right? With a rocket rising up in the sky. And here, right in front, there's a whole series of like, uh, there's this path which is full of basically stars. You see those statues. So there are statues on the left and on the right of people who have contributed to the, to the great Soviet achievements in the space race, basically. And then in the middle of the path, you see there are these, um, star-like statues to symbolize the cosmos basically to symbolize space and you see over there there's uh there's like this uh this model of the solar system 
maquette planète na système sonsa uh, yeah so it's basically it says model of the planets of the solar system so this is the base of the monument you see um, this is basically the side of the of the museum that's inside that's inside here and uh, a level below because it's also underground so you see here it says 1957 so this is basically uh, celebrating the fact that in 1957 the first uh, spaceship so the first uh, spacecraft built by the Soviets was successfully sent into space and then four years later 1961 it was the turn of Yuri Gagarin as we all know and since everything here is about space let me take you somewhere else I don't want to spoil anything but this is Ploshat Gagarina Square Gagarin so I think you can kind of guess what that is just how freaking cool is this first man in space ever Yuri Gagarin fantastic it shows Gagarin taking off almost like a rocket emerging from the plume of its spaceship in a stance that is reminiscent to those of the superheroes from movies and cartoons. How was it for him to take off into uncharted territory, into space for the first time in human history? What was it that he might have been thinking? During those very last moments before taking off this was built for the 1980 Olympics, so after Gagarin's death. 42 meters tall, although Gagarin reached the heights much higher than that, of course. And a fun fact is that whereas Gagarin was of course the first man in space, the first human being in space, Valentina Tireshkova was also a Russian woman, a Soviet woman, and she was the first woman in space a few, a couple of years after Gagarin. And uh, she has a monument dedicated to her as well. But um, it's not in Moscow, it's, um, it's a bit in the middle of nowhere, in the Altai territory in Russia, in Siberia, basically. And they decided to build a, a monument for her there, because that's that's not far from where she eventually landed after her mission. But right here, we have Yuri, Yuri Gagarin.